Hello everybody, it's Kitakyo here. Uh, welcome to week one of the PWC. Uh, this video is kind of late, but I just wasn't feeling to record it earlier. As a matter of fact, we have a week two game today, more likely. So, anyways, yeah. So, we're fishing up against uh, Sprinkle. He came in from the league uh, for like the last three four weeks last season because Gio dropped out and he was the first of the point so he's pretty good nonetheless Smoke is a really good battler and uh, he has very scared fat ass team so his team consists of uh, Mew, Ferrothorn, Mian Xiao, Jolteon, Mantine, Golurk, Clef, uh, Skontank I think, Lycanroc, Dusk, uh, and Charger X. Right now, the dock he has Tauros, but like he didn't have it at the time, so I don't know what what else it was. Fuck it. Okay. So he has a very very scary team. Um, he broke pretty much what I expected. I honestly thought like when Dust would come over Golurk, but I can see why Golurk came. He had a decently good matchup against me. Um. I'm surprised not to see my time though, because I think if I brought Keldio and he didn't bring my time, Keldio pretty much just gets a kill every time. Because like my Magnus on traps fair alright and I just spam water type attacks and like everything nice. But that's fine. Um Jolteon was kinda scary too because it's just so fast. It can hit my team, it can carry carry HP ground from Magnus Zone and whatnot. And it can just be a nuisance, but um, the team that he brought is still pretty scary. So, yeah, our team here, we brought, uh, this time I'm not gonna do team builders, cause like, eh, don't really feel like doing that. We are bringing, uh, Choice Scarf Landers, uh, Jolly Nature, nearly max speed, uh, I think this Lando speeds, uh, Scarf, um, uh, uh, speeds, uh, Adam and Charles are a plus one. We are packing... Airquake, Yutri, Stonich, and Knockoff, basically the, that is the best movesets, the, the best moves we can carry. Uh, we are not max attack because we have a, quite a bit of defense to take on a, on like a Jolly, Charizard, Flare Blitz, uh, a plus one, or a Ninja basically. Because that will be able to outspeed us, of course. If it's Adamant, then we outspeed him and kill him, so... That's the idea behind that, and you're gonna see that not being max at that kind of cost us a bit. Um, I'm not gonna spoil more. Then we have Mega Pinsir here. Uh, pretty much standard is D, I guess. We return Sorzens, Excisor, and Faint. Excisor is the solely there for the Mew, because Mew is a fucking annoyance. Uh, Faint over Quick Attack because. If it did bro like and roll Dusk, which he didn't, and I'm glad he did it. Uh Faint is plus two priority and in a, a scenario where it, like and roll is super low, but like can like just pick up my pincer with a cellar rock and we faint it out, then it's dead. So that's pretty cool. Next up we have a uh, white glasses salazzo with a uh, hidden power electric, sludge wave, flame throw, and dragon balls. And he has literally zero Mon that can take uh, sludge waves and flamethrowers. Like everything takes neutral real super effective damage. Hidden power electric there was fully solely for the man time because sludge wave didn't do KO. And D pulse is there to a code Sar after rocks. Um it does a shit ton to Sar even without rocks too, so it's the last suspected to put in a lot of work. Uh we're running modest because if we run timid, we do speed the like a rock, but that thing gets priority as a rock anyways, which blows me back. So like, I don't see the point. And modest still outruns the base 100s like Mew and Charizard. I don't know speed me and Shell, but I don't expect to outspeed speed that thing anyways. So that's why we're running modest here. Um, next up we have Magnezone. Uh, we're running sub toxic set with hidden power fire and flash cannon with magnet pool. So the idea behind this set is we trap Ferrothorn. Um, if he cannot break our 
if it cannot uh, do anything to us, if it just wants to lay out spikes or everything, then because I'm expecting initially, I'm expecting a shed shell ferroton, right? So, like, I expect him to we come in, we trap him, he's shed shell, so he switches out as I set up a sub. And now I have basically a free sub to launch a toxic because the most of his switching will be Charizard, obviously, if it's after Mega. And we can toxic that thing up and worry that a lot. Uh, we can flash cannon pretty much everything else. We can even toxic the Mew, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that was the idea behind the set. Um, yeah. And what else we got here? We got Clinklin. Yes, Clinklin. Our boy Clinklin. Coming to first game, so fuck all of y'all that doubted me. This is uh, Shift Gear Clinklin Adamant. Uh, with Shift Gear, Gear Ground, Wild Charge, and Giga Impact with a Normalium Z. Uh, so the reason because of Z, Giga Impact is because of Charizard. During Calx, uh, I feel like Z Giga Impact was the best call because it occurs um, Mega Star X with a... Um, like basically, I don't need that much chip damage to Oko Mega Star X. Would if I had return, then I would need uh, quite a bit of chip. I think it does like a maximum of 75%. So that that was I wasn't liking my odds with that, so I decided to go with Giga Impact. You're gonna see on the game that it would have been better to have a return, but that's fine. And then we have our Tyranitar, which is a very insane set. <laughs> Full of utility uh, with Stealth Rocks, Protect, Roar, and Crunch. 248 HP, 252 Defense, Max, and Pish. With 8 Speed Investment. Uh, this T-Tar is basically there to support the team and do anything else than that. It's back in, uh, it's back in Crunch as it's only attacking move. Just because we don't want to be kind of set up for the two mute, and we do have a roar for that thing, so that's pretty good. Um, Stout Rocks, get him up. Protect is scouts on Mianxiao, mainly. That's pretty much it for. If Mianxiao wants to go for a jump kick, we protect up, take some damage, bitch. So, yeah, that's the team we're bringing. And, like already said, Smigo brought pretty much everything I expected except the Light Can Rock. Or like the Mantine, so let's get right into the game. So we're gonna lead with Scarf Landers and see leads with his Mian Shao. So turn one, I mean, I expect this thing to have HP ice like 100%. Because why wouldn't he? Uh, Mian Shao puts in a lot of work against my team. The only one that kind of checks is Lando, but like if you have HP ice, you're good. And as we're going to trade attacks, he's gonna go for the Hidden Power Ice. So I'm gonna go right for the earthquake, and as you're gonna see, we're gonna get 95%. So this was unfortunately absolute minimum roll on my part. So that really sucks because if I kill this thing, then me and Shao wouldn't be a problem anymore. And basically, my other mods just like going so hard on his team, but that's fine. That's where it caused me to have a what you call it to don't have max attack on these landers, but it's okay though. Uh, even though it was still like a 50 feet, no, I remember the roll, but it, it, it was a pretty good chance to kill, but we didn't, so that's fine. As he's going to switch into Ferroton, I see we're going to switch into Tar, because we know he's locked in. And then we're just going to trade up rocks, pretty much. Um, and then I'm going to hard into Magnezone, which probably is not the play, but he just go for Jairus, so that ends up working out for me. And here I'm gonna set up a sub, and we're gonna scout, uh, see if he has the bulldoze, as which he does. And that's pretty bad because bulldoze uh, would do shit ton of damage to me. He revealed that he's Oka Berry, so he's not the Chet Shell Berry I expected. So that kind of sucks for me because we cannot kill this thing with another hand power fire. I'm pretty sure we can kill it. I don't think I ran the calc, but as you're going to see, Magnezon is well trained. And he's, we are going to pick a kill with the critical hit, hidden power fire. So that could more likely matter. Um, and then, uh, yeah. However, we're just going to sack this thing next turn to the Mian Shell. Because, like, 
like I said, we don't have really safe switchings to this thing. That's why I would have liked to kill it turn one, but but oh well. Hold up, the fucking music ended. Uh, da, da, da. All right. So we're gonna go into pincer now, and we're gonna click return because we know for a fact he's not staying it. So he goes into Cliff Bay, but we we'll click return and do a shit ton of damage to the stay. Um. Uh, easily being able to do it. This was on our cleft, of course. It makes a lot of sense uh, because I've set up mouse. So it's gonna go into Golor. We're gonna go hard into Titar. Sorry, to take his stunage. Um, and then he's gonna Earthquake. So here's something funny. He has the Drain Punch, but he ups to Earthquake. I don't blame him though because. Um, actually. No, yeah, Dream Punch was probably the play here, 100%, unless like I made a crazy switch into Salazzo, but I wasn't about, about to do that, uh, however, because Erkwes did 56%, he should know that Dream Punch would have not killed, because I'm a max defense and push Titar, so I still would have lived the Dream Punch and get off this crucial crunch damage that we're about to do to this uh, Goler Cho. Even though he probably didn't click the best move to hit Titar, it still would have not mattered on the long run. Because as you're gonna see, Titar is gonna be uh, sucked off later on the game. Um, the reason why he didn't push us because he didn't see I was left. He thought I was um, he thought I was uh, Chopo. So he dream punch and switches into Lando, which I go in solely to intimidate this thing. And now we're going to Clank Land because we can live an earthquake easily of this thing. And he goes into Sar. I wish you gear up right. And this is where I wish I had um, return because return here had a it, it on the game on the moment. Uh, it definitely could have killed. But after seeing the Sumeru goes team, this was a very fat Charizard. So I don't know what the calc on that was. So it was probably better than Haki got impact after all, anyways. But um, yeah, I don't know if. This fat shark could have taken a return because if it died to return, then pretty much Clink Clank kind of sweeps at this point of the game. But as you're going to, you're gonna have to pop or see move in order to kill this thing. Um, with the breakneck blitz income in the meal, which is the only thing that can take this on now. We gotta hit with the gear grinds, we do the good amount of damage here. He bulk ups, and as long as I say connect this gear grind. Uh, the game is pretty much mine. I'm pretty sure even a plus one new dice to this point because it's only a 32% and Giga should be doing enough to it. So we are going to miss sadly because it was a fun game. But I mean, I did crit him. Yeah, see, he would have died guaranteed. Pokemon is a fun game and like, I mean, but I did crit him on the hidden power fire. So I guess there's no room to talk. But uh, yeah. So we're just gonna keep gear grinding. Unfortunately, Clank Clank could have potentially swept. No, it would have swept, guaranteed. Because a plus two, I'm pretty sure was gear, that would be the Scarfman shot. Here we're gonna get a, another shift gear up. Uh, and then, as he attacks us with low kick, he's gonna low kick again. And I'm glad he attacks us there and again with a low kick instead of roosting because and now he's in range of our. Uh, Sludge Wave, Wise Glasses, Salazzo. So, we're gonna go into Salazzo, we're gonna click Sludge Wave, and we're gonna pick up this meal. So, these things are looking very nicely for us because at this point, Mega Pinsir pretty much just cleans up the game. So, we're gonna go Satitar. I see Rock Slides up and uh, summons the Sand, which kind of helps. We're gonna go to Pinsir, take 50% from Rocks. We're going to click Faint twice and we should be able to win the game in case this fucking Mianxiao has like a shit ton of HP investment <laughs> then faint it's a uh, roll to kill if I'm not mistaken but uh even though even if we get like a low roll I'm pretty sure Sand kills it afterwards so he will be dead anyway so we're going to pick up a nice 2 win against the uh, Smurgle uh, week one, so that's very good. We're starting a uh, strong foot, 
and that's always good. It's always good to start with a win. Uh, very, very glad how the team came out at the end. Um, very good prep for me. Go for like the Magnus zone and whatnot. The Mew was very scary to face too. Um, Clef and Char and Char didn't get to do anything, but those monsters are always annoying. So yeah, uh, there's nothing else to say. Next week we go up against Shiny, Spam, Jacob, Merm, whatever you want to call him. And we'll have that video right up for you uh, pro sometime this week. Also, WPL starting playoffs next week, so that's pretty cool. Stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching. This was SDK. And I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.